there, I'm Jonathan, this is Tech Stuff, and I wanted to talk about 3D printers, how they work, and how they're going to change the world. Now this technology has been around for a while, it started in the early 1990s, but those early models cost tens of thousands of dollars. But now you can buy something like this monoprice model for just $1,200, which means now I get to get my claws into it. 3D printers work in a process called additive manufacturing. It's all about building an object by laying down layer after layer of material until you're done. Now, additive manufacturing means you waste less material. You're just using what you need to build whatever you want. But it also means it goes a little slowly because you're going layer by layer. And these layers can be really thin, thinner than a sheet of paper. In fact, the thinner, the better. Very thin layers means that the final object's gonna be nice and smooth, so any rounded surfaces aren't gonna have jagged edges to them. Generally speaking, the 3D printer uses special ink or toner that has a binding agent in it, which means it'll stick to itself. Now your typical consumer 3D printer uses ABS material. That stands for acryl acrylonitrile buta acrylonitrile acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. You can see why we go with ABS. You can heat it up and then you can work with it. It becomes pliable. When it cools down, it will maintain that shape. That's the secret behind the 3D printer. I mean, you might be saying, okay, well, what is it good for besides just building stuff? In the industrial world, we're talking about allowing engineers to go from plan to prototype in no time flat. They can build a virtual model in a computer-assisted design program, send it to a 3D printer, and see what the physical object looks like and whether or not it works. And if it doesn't, they just go back to that virtual model, tweak a few settings, and print it again. You have iteration to prototype in just minutes. Now, on the consumer level, it could really change our world as well. Imagine that you want a specific piece of furniture, but none of the stores around you happen to have it in their inventory. So you buy a digital model and send it to a printer that will print your furniture for you and then you just go and pick it up. Or maybe you have a 3D printer at home. You just print toys and knickknacks to your heart's desire. Maybe you have a 3D scanner. Maybe you get the idea to print your own action figure. Now, I imagine that a lot of us are going to use 3D printers just to print stuff that we need around the house, which could come in really handy, but could also really shake up manufacturing and retail industries. Think about it right now. We would go to a digital marketplace or maybe make something of our own and then send it to a 3D printer, but who protects those ideas? Copyright protects things that are written or recorded, but maybe we need some sort of protection for physical objects. In a world where you can print in three dimensions, a chair is as easy to share as a music file. Let's talk about some bleeding edge uses of 3D printers. The bleeding edge. Number one. Human organs. Doctors and engineers are looking at using 3D printers to produce human organs. Here's how it would work. They would take stem cells from a transplant patient and then build a living organ using a 3D printer. The patient doesn't have to wait for a suitable donor and their body is much less likely to reject that organ. Two. Pizza! NASA is looking at using 3D printers to print food in space, like pizza. Can't think of a more noble cause. Three. Space thrusters. The Dragon V2 capsule has four Super Draco thrusters, each with an engine chamber made in a 3D printer. Four. A whistle! Seriously. So, whether you plan on making a customized chess piece or go to Mars, I'm pretty sure one of these things is going to be involved somewhere along the way. 